Welcome back friends. Now that we have handled the situation where we can add items to the shopping cart, both situations where item is a new item or item is a repeated item, it is time for us to move forward and display the shopping cart to the user after the user has decided that his shopping is complete. Now remember if the user clicks six, enters six in the menu, then we our, we know that the user shopping is over and we can now choose to display the shopping cart. Now, this is something that always happens in an e-commerce website as well. Before we make our final payment, we are shown what does our shopping cart contain so that we can reconcile and we can uh, make changes if we wanted to. Now, in displaying the shopping cart, there are a bunch of things we are going to display. For example, we are going to, dis dis we are going to display what item the user has purchased and what quantity the user has purchased it at. We are also going to display a price and we later on see how we can add, let's say, item-wise total price for uh, every item. Let us get started with this process. It turns out that item and quantity is in fact very simple because we already have those two lists, shopping cart and shopping quant. Unit price requires a little bit more work, so we'll come back to that later in this video. But let's go back to our program. Remember that, uh, so this is one of the runs I had done previously. I had purchased milkshake and eclairs. That is contained in my shopping cart and shopping quant is three and two respectively, which means that now if I want to display these items, all I really have to do is to print, say item zero of shopping cart, item zero of shopping quant in one row, item one of shopping cart and item one of shopping quant in another row. And for that purpose, this is a repetitive uh, you know, situation. So I'm going to directly get into a for loop and I'm going to say for KK in range, let's say length of shopping cart now notice here that previously we had you know uh, you know when we had when we first start the code we print the menu and that is at that time we had done range length of menu uh, you know over here but now we have to do the printing of the shopping cart so we will look at the list shopping cart and pretty much the same logic we hold we are going to just index into the list shopping cart so what i'm going to do here is that i'm going to say okay print for example shopping cart say kk and shopping say quant say kk now if i did this in fact this is all i need really for now to for me to be able to display the quantity the item and the quantity and we can see this working for ourselves uh, so let's say i purchase one i say three units i purchase say five i just say two units and now i say six i will get my in a message shopping is complete, displaying shopping cart, and all I've got here is milkshake three units, cupcake two units, and this part should be quite straightforward to understand because KK is incrementing inside the for loop and it's going from zero to one in this case, and it's printing these two. Now, I would like to format this a little bit better and also would like to give it some heading. So maybe I'll just give an extra print over here and then I'll say print, for example, item and also say quant. Uh, so Q U A N T. And just to make my formatting look a little bit better, I'm going to use a set statement here and say, you know, backslash T, backslash T, backslash T. Now again, three tabs is not something that you must require. It depends on what you're trying to print. You will have to adjust it for your project, but I'm using three tabs because it kind of works for me. So I'm going to also do the same thing in, you know, in, um, in actual printing of the values. So I'm going to say backslash T, backslash T, backslash T. And with this, I think my display will be a little bit more neater, let's say. So I say I purchase three, I want two quantities of this. I purchase, say, five, I want, say, one quantity of this. I need to click six. If I click six, notice what happens. It says shopping is complete, displaying shopping cart, and shopping cart basically is item and quantity and looks quite okay from the way, uh, you know, it has appeared here. Now, I want to tell my user the unit price for that particular item. So for example, chocolate, we know from the earlier list that chocolate per unit was say uh, 89.99, but we would like to print that also as part of the uh, shopping cart because we want to also show an item wise total price. Uh, this, this is more clear. Now it turns out that this is a little bit more complicated. So before writing any code, I'm going to do a little bit of visualization. Uh, you know, I go back here, Notice what's happening is that we have the shopping cart, which is the names of the items that we want to purchase. We have the shopping quant, which is the quantity that I want to purchase. But I 
do not readily have i mean i do not have in these two lists the price however we do not have to worry because we know that for every item the price has been listed in this list called price and this list price is in perfect sync with the list menu we don't change them once they have been created so we know that the uh, item zero of price is in fact the price per unit of milkshake item say three of price is price per unit of item three of menu which is eclairs now if i just want to reverse this argument what we need to do really is that we need to find out for every item in the shopping cart we have to find out where in this menu does this item exist or what is the index of this item in the menu and be sure that this item does indeed exist in the menu because remember from the menu only we create the shopping cart so i know it exists i just have to find out which item in the list menu is this item and once i know this index then i can go and read the price at the same index so for example take milkshake milkshake appears on item 0 of menu and hence the price from unit milkshake is price at that index which is price 0 eclairs eclairs although appears as one here you know is 3 in this list so i am going to read price 3 of you know uh, the unit price will be basically price 3 for eclairs now as i said be very careful the ordering on this list may not be the same as ordering on this list because this list really is dynamic it's being formed as the user is ordering whereas this link has, list has been created once and we can use it again and again so what we are really going to do is a little bit complex indexing here but you know let's see how it works and again i will go back to scratch and give you an equivalent command in scratch so that makes it a bit more clear but let's for now go back to our uh, you know our uh, python program and here and now i want to also show the unit price so i go and say for example add unit price uh, and now i need to somehow find this unit price so what i want to do remember is that i want to find out where in the list menu does this particular item shop of shopping cart exist so for that purpose i'm going to do idx this time round but remember this time i must find index with respect to the list menu unlike the previous case where i when we updated the shopping cart we found index with respect to the list shopping cart but now i must find out the index with respect to the list menu uh, as we just saw in the visualization so i'm going to say menu dot index so you know menu dot index shopping cart now here i don't need to do order minus one or kk minus one for example i just have to do shopping cart kk the reason is that kk goes from because the for loop kk goes from zero until say length minus one which means that when i'm looking at the very first index and we already saw that in the printing we are looking at kk zero and which means we are looking at for example in this example chocolate now we can also for our own reference say print you know idx and uh, you know say we can just maybe make so make it a bit more clear so idx and here i put say idx and now that we know that this is the index in the list menu for that particular shopping cart item all i have to do is to say unit price is nothing but price and add that index remember i'm now indexing it to the list called price and i can display that over here right now i can go and say say for example unit price and with this i need to give a comma here let's see this working uh, and you know that it becomes more clear as to what's going on here okay so i'm going to make this a bit wider let the code be there and when i run this now so what happens is so it says say one to five i say i'm going to say four units of milkshake new selection i go and say three say five units of uh, say chocolate and now if i click six notice i have got here you know index i printed idx zero the reason it printed idx zero is because first i went and found out the index of milkshake in the list menu and i know that is zero then i went and found out the index of the item chocolate in the list menu i know that is two that's why index was two and as a result i managed to read their correct unit prices so milkshake was 99.99 chocolate as we see here is 89.99 i hope this made it somewhat clearer uh, but you know i'm going to remove this print from here so it's becomes a bit more clear before i wrap this up like i said we will look at the equivalent scratch statements because that actually helps what we are doing really here is that we are taking 
a given item, say for example, it's item one or item two and so on and so forth, that's happening through the for loop. We are finding item number of this whole thing inside the list menu. So we are really doing indexing of two lists. So, you know, what we are, uh, the equivalent Python is idx is menu.index because remember we are indexing into the list menu. We are finding out the index with respect to the list menu of this particular item. So notice it's exactly this item number of item one of shopping cart in menu. So, you know, if you think about this statement carefully, it's in fact, same thing is going on here. Just that KK indexes the list shopping list. KK goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and so forth. IDX indexes the list menu. And that's why it's menu.index. Now, if you can relate these two, it will be a lot easier and a lot logical, especially with the uh, visualization that we have provided. I hope this becomes clear for you. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.